So, uh, sorry to keep you waiting. So then, we would like to start the Tokyo Temporary Art Award 2022-2024 uh, Award Symphony uh, Symposium. So then, um, I would like to introduce uh, Arts Initiative Tokyo Director, uh, Shiomi Yuko. Who so, uh, AIT has been in charge of the administration of this award um, since its founding. So then, I would like to pass the mic to uh, Shiomi Yuko. Thank you. Hello, everyone. As introduced now, uh, I am Shiomi Yuko, uh, and I am administrator of the TCAA Selection Committee. So, thank you for participating in this award symposium today. So, um, this uh, symposium will be split into two halves. In the first half, I will quickly introduce the award and ask our speakers, Takahashi Mizuki, Washida Meruro, Nomura Shinobu, and Kondo Yuki, who served as members of the selection committee, to talk about the points on which the TCEA winners were evaluated. In the second half, we will invite the winners, Tsuda Michiko and Cyborg, to introduce their work and their current plans for their award exhibition, among other things. Um, although not listed in the distributed materials, the handouts, uh, Mr. Washida was able to join this symposium on short notice, as was uh, Ms. Takahashi, who returned from Hong Kong. So then, um, first from me, I will just, for five minutes, introduce the award about its aims and process. So uh, this repeats from what was already said. Uh, the Tokyo Contemporary Art Award was established in 2018 by the organizers Tokyo Met Metropolitan Government and TOKAS. The award targets mid-career artists um, making use of uh, the MOT and TOKAS uh, to support outstanding artists to, to develop their research over overseas, their practice overseas. They receive uh, a sum of three, 3 million yen and also 2 million yen, uh, up to 2 million men uh, uh, support activities overseas, and also an exhibition at MOT and Monograph. Um, so it gives comprehensive encouragement, uh, winners' activity through prize money and overseas experience. However, due to the current situation, um, we're also um, positively supporting domestic activities to that link to overseas connections. In terms of the selection process, so there are two different routes, uh, open call and one by recommended candidates. So for this time, there were 48 candidates and six artists were nominated in an initial selection process. So ideally, um, the International Selection Committee members would join. Um, they would come to Japan, but they actually participated online on this event. This is also in English, as you see. So for the fourth TCAA 2022-2024, um, as uh, introduced earlier, Tsuda Michiko and Cyborg. So here is uh, the studio visit. So one of the particular uh, points of this award is that um, the members of the committee visit the studi studios of the artists. And, uh, and sometimes this is, uh, takes place at the MOT, as was the case with uh, Michiko Suda. So um, it's not only an opportunity for the members to meet the artist, but also to deepen discussion, deepen understanding of the artist's practice. So in this slide, uh, we will be able to yeah, talk about that a bit later. And this is Cyborg, Cyborg's uh, studio visit. So then we visited her studio. It was a presentation, but as you see next to Cyborg, there was a, a performer who actually joined as well.
Here is a, a three-year schedule of the award. Um, so here first we have the, the winners of this award and also um, concurrently we have the exhibition of the second winners of the award, uh, Hikaru Fuji and uh, Yamashiro Chikako. So after three years, um, they also produced the monograph. I'll just quickly introduce the past winners. So the Shitamichi and uh, Kazama, the winners of the first TCAA. Next, who are currently um, uh, exhibiting in the MOT, Hikaru Fuji and Yamashiro Chikako. This is on the third floor of uh, MOT, so if you have time, please visit. And then last year, uh, the winners were Shiga Lieko and Takuchi Kota. Uh, Shiga has postponed her trip overseas to focus on local activities. Specifically, um, she's creating a space for contemplation in Miyagi Prefecture um, since uh, August 2021, opening uh, her studio and holding uh, semi-closed lectures and discussion with uh, guests. Also, um, there will be a bilingual booklet published and special website. In terms of uh, Takuchi, he visited the US uh, from uh, America and the UK uh, from July to October 2021 in regard to uh, attacks on the North American continent by the Japanese army during World War II using balloon bombs and involved him visiting actual sites uh, to deepen his research and uh, conduct interviews. It's lucky that he was able to go even uh, despite the, um, the COVID uh, measures uh, where he received his comment. Um, here you see the uh, previous selection committee members. So each time we have six international selection committee members. And uh, on this occasion we had uh, Sofia Hernandez Chongqui and Carol Yinghua Lu. And these are the uh, committee members this, this time. But we have a message from uh, Sophia and Carol, which we will share with you afterwards. So then, um, to the uh, committee members present here, we'd like to ask for a quick comment. First, if I could uh, share um, Sophia's message via video. So she will uh, give a, a comment about the overall um, uh, joining the uh, award and also uh, about the presentations of all the artists. So then um, I'll just introduce Sophia. After that I will ask uh, Washida uh, Kondo and uh, to, to talk about the particulars of uh, Tsuda's work and why she was slow selected. So then Sophia. I'm the director of Kunst Institut Meli, a contemporary art center in the city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. I have been part of the jury of the Tokyo Contemporary Arts Award already for two editions, and I am very happy uh, to be part of it. The artists' portfolios are very well presented, uh, the questions and how these are answered. For example, where would you like to travel? and the complexity of responses that we get precisely because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the travel measurements in place, well, it's been very inspiring. Artists uh, want to travel sometimes uh, directly to the country where they would like to do research and propose all the different possibilities and options of doing that route. And some other artists also uh, wish to wait for traveling or to travel in an imaginary way. The portfolios uh, or the collection of applications and portfolios really show a very lively art scene in Japan 
which is a, a place that I've only visited once and my hope was that doing the studio visits uh, would be another occasion for me to be able to experience uh, firsthand the uh, beauty of that country. Unfortunately, um, although in a very lively way, we've done the studio visits online and I want to thank the artists for uh, allowing for those uh, live transmissions to happen. I know it's a lot of work to have cameras and translators and also a, you know, a lot of people there learning about your artwork in one single go, in one short visit that may or may not determine whether a, one becomes a winner of the award. It's very humbling to see artists open up their spaces to a group of arts professionals to, a, yeah, to, to be able to see directly what you're working on. So thank you to the artists. And I have to say that uh, the studio visit with a, an artist, I'm going to single out here, Michiko Tsuda, uh, was quite inspiring. Uh, the work and the proposals, uh, I mean the portfolio of works and the proposals, showed the artist uh, already exploring, whether it was through performance or through photography, but also performing not just uh, herself working in a studio, or in an exhibition format, but also in public space and with a group of students uh, with her working together on a public performance. To me, this was very telling of the way in which the artist explores the different uh, possibilities or points of encounter that they can have in making art and in uh, inviting the public to think about our present. Her interest in a movement of the body and how movement is a gendered, especially for the camera, was quite a well discussed a, during the studio visit, not through past work, but also through her own a, personal experience of having had the video camera for the first time at home and having a sourced from the very first videotape of a home movie a, that she a, openly played with us on that online studio visit. It was very endearing to see how a, a moment in one's life really helps define a, an artistic trajectory or that at least a, in her case, that film a, or studying Japanese film has been an inspiration for her work, but then when she investigates a root concept or a root interest is that she can go back retrospectively and even identify the point in one's life where the first question around what does it mean to make an image or to take an image. So I uh, thank very much Rika uh, from uh, the institution and working very closely uh, in developing and making happen the, the Tokyo Contemporary Arts Award, uh, always uh, making sure that I get the info and passing on the info to whoever it's needed. I'm very glad that she invited me to make this videotape so that I could share some thoughts about how beautiful the process has been as a juror. And even though I have been, been able to be there on site, eh, that is a wish, and hopefully it will happen soon. And yes, congratulations to all the artists eh, that participated, because even though eh, it's always just a handful that win the awards in these processes, it's eh, everyone who gets to be seen in terms, at least, of their portfolios and their ideas and the work that eh, that, that entails. So thank you so much, and uh, I hope that you have a nice celebration. Thank you very much, Sophia. Uh, nice to see her after such a long time. So over three days, the selection process is taken, and everyone is joining at the same time, um, holding the um, discussion interviews with the artists, so we we remember sharing those three days with her. So next I would like to ask uh, Washida and Kondo to say uh, something about uh, Tsuda's work. So regarding Tsuda, uh so during the introduction, like you know, the uh, Tsuda just mentioned about two points. You know, one is the, uh, the, the 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 attribute, and another one is the language, and uh, so so what I want to say at first is that uh, 
so amongst this uh, selection committee, so we don't pay much attention, like, you know, whether the, the artist, like, you know, basically we don't pay attention to the gender attribute of the artist, basically. So I, so when I was, uh, So IT Triennale, like where I was got involved as a curator, where the Atsuda and the Saibo got involved as well. And uh, when I saw them, so as an affirmative action, uh, we we decided to take the uh, more than half. Uh, the, the we we decided to take a female artist as like you know in terms of number of the genders attribution. Uh, yeah, gender the attributes. You know, we decided to take the half of the artist to be a female artist. And that's what we have announced under the, uh, you know, for the, under the Aichi Triennale. But, uh, so like, you know, for the previous award, you know, we got this uh, one female artist and one male artist, but the, for this time, you know, it's it's not that uh, we decided based on the genders, but uh, for this year, like you know, we just happened. It just happened that uh, we had like you know two female artists to be a winner. And uh, back to that, uh, what I find her work interesting is that uh, she was more. She was considered to be like you know, from people from the from the artists from the uh, media art, so the camera. So, what it means for people to be like you know, captured in camera and that's what she was doing in research or she was making the work and uh, that's what I found her quite interesting at first and uh, normally like I say if we talk about documentary they what well, it's captured there it's a documentary is based like you know the, the work assumes that the com camera is not there basically and then, like, you know, that would get, like, uh, broadcasted. Like, you know, that's how the documentary works. You know, there's a certain assumption to it. So, uh, they don't make, ex they don't people on the camera to do something extra because the camera is there or not. So that's, th that's the uh, attitude of uh, documentary, isn't it? Like, you know, camera is uh, somehow an invisible thing. So, uh, like, you know, the snap photos, and those things like you know they people expect us like you know spontaneous or natural as possible basically but uh, what Suda told me before was that uh, that photo is it like an auto photo or like you know, taken by it's a bit like a so if you look at the photo bit you can somehow work it out like you know, whether the photo is taking a selfie or not basically and you you know so uh, that's something like I also felt as well, so like you know, the camera, the presence of camera does have certain impact onto the uh, subject, basically, and uh, that is something like you know, today is just working or like you know, developing her work, and then um, yeah, that's something I found her work really interesting, and uh, talk about media art. You know, often like you know, people consider like you know, some new tech thing, like you know, computer or like you know, like three uh, D things or whatever. You know, like uh, creating some work using new technology, like into, resulting in something, creating something new, and uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, like uh, that particular medium, like you know, the camera or video. So how the uh, like a presence of devices does have the impact onto the output. I think that's what the uh, that's what is really interesting about, or like and that's the essence or like essential crucial part of the uh, media of art. So uh, to that extent, so to that work is like you know looking into the very core of the uh, media art. And uh, so along with camera. So, so camera captures like you know some event, and then through that, like you know the uh, people's movement, like you know, and then like you know she like you know that gains interest like you know, onto the uh, body, and they even like you know to, to the extent of a choreography, a choreography, and uh, so like you know there are new element coming up in her work, and uh, her work is like you know the extended. You know, to uh, the uh, the area of uh, performance. 
So even like you know the uh, the uh, whatever the presentation we got under this uh, TCA award, she was getting into the details of like you know how she wants to expand her practice, you know, into the performance and dance and so on. So uh, that's something like I'm really hoping to see in her future works, and uh, and then like you know there's this. Uh, yeah, gender roles, expectation, those things, you know, it's coming up as well. So, for example, Ozu's uh, film works where on the film, like, you know, there are people's maneuver. So, like, uh, because the maneuver, or like, you know, people's movement on his work is, of course, like, you know, the choreograph and choreographed and uh, as the uh, to the reenacting the same movement like you know somehow like we can start seeing the uh, gender roles and so on so uh so on that film like you know the the male body is quite direct maneuver whereas the female body is like you know crossing over from left to right all the time so like you know those small small things like you know, she discovers and accumulates and uh that's something I found it really interesting. Sorry, sorry for like you know talking a bit too long, but uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm very excited with uh, Tsuda's work, and I'm hoping that uh, she will come up with something really ex exciting in the future. So then, uh, Miss Kondo, if you could continue. So, like, you know, the, the, the watchdog just more or less, like, you know, they said everything, but... Uh, so, uh, so the, when we were doing a studio vis visit, we had quite interesting discussions, you know, and... Uh, so, the contemporary artist... So, so, the young emerging artist or, like, a mid-career artist, like, you know, they're coming up with interesting ideas, and then we... The selection committee is, like, you know, imposing quite a lot of questions. And uh, selection committees, of course, like each one of us, like have different interest areas, right? So, uh, so the question, like you know, going in so many different directions, and of course the the resulting discussion goes like in you know, sort of many areas, and artists try level this to cover answer, you know, and then like you know, that answer like leads to another question, and it was really exciting. And then the uh, at the end of the discussion, like you know, there's a moment, you know, of like you know, somehow like you know, everything gets settled, you know, into the stomach basically, and uh, talking about so the you know the camera, uh, the mirror, video frame, so the real, unreal, like you know, those uh, somehow not really illusion, but like in that sense of illusion is there, like in that sort of installation work, and uh, and as Washita mentioned that, uh, so as an artist unit. So, like, you know, re-connecting the uh, the maneuver uh, created onto the film as, like, you know, re to uh, investigate the, uh, yeah, social, cultural, you know, the uh, gender roles. You know, that's something that she's been investing as a part of her performance. And uh, that's, that becomes, like, you know, one of her strong style of her work. And uh, so through the discussion, you know, so the relationship or power balance, like you know, captured with the camera, and then you know, try to trying to sort of uh, translate into the uh, non-verbal element, like you know, sort of uh, physicalities and bodies and movement and so on. So like you know, from the earlier earlier works and then today's works and even the future works, something I found it quite consistent in her practice. And uh, so talking about gender issues or like a power balance. So it's not like you know, only through her works, but uh, but uh, you know, say you know, not only the, through her works, but like you know, the, through her also like you know the other works, like you know the art education. So uh, the 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 issue is not like in living in her works, but also in her daily practice, and uh, that's something like uh, gave me quite a strong impression. So the research, you know, they were sort of talked about, like, you know, for this award, or the plan, basically, is that uh, about their contemporary dance, you know, and uh, that will be, that will create quite interesting connection to her, you know, the current practice, 
to yeah to the current practice so like i'm i do have quite high expectation on my practice thank you thank you so then next i would like to uh, show carol's video message and after that i'll ask uh, miss takashi and miss tomura to give their evaluation of the selection of uh, cyborg so if we could uh, pass to carol's video it has been a great privilege to be a jury member for a TCAA since 2019. I have experienced this award four times now, thanks to the trust from TCAA team. During this process, I have never stopped being impressed and inspired by the commitment to supporting art and artistic exchanges as demonstrated by the TCAA team. Through their work, I have had precious access to artist studios and their practices. Despite the great challenges of COVID-19, we managed to visit artists and talk to artists in depth through the professional and efficient organization of the team. This year's visits were as lively and informative as before, although they were all conducted through the internet for overseas jury members like me. As in the previous editions, I was amazed by the excellence, depth, and wisdom of the works by Japanese artists. I was particularly interested in the sense of urgency demonstrated by the practice of the artists we have visited, to engage with many aspects of our problematic world, from the environmental concerns to historical legacies. At the same time, the artistic languages were very sophisticated and well-developed, with incredible innovation and diversity. One of the winning artists this year Seibog stood out for her dynamism and bravery as she was interrogating such major and serious issues as the hegemony of hidden power structures. She approached them and made us aware of them with a sense of absurdity that was thought provocative and confrontational. Through her work, we came to realize the urgency of the issues at stake. I would like to congratulate her and wish her best of luck. I hope to continue to follow her works and to be able to introduce her practice to the Chinese art community one day. Thank you. Thank you. Very strong comment from Carol. So then uh, I'd just like to ask uh, Takashi and Nomura to give a comment about Cyborg. Yes. Uh, so as you, as I've already mentioned, so uh, this award, so what is a characteristic of this uh, award is that, uh, you know, the studio visit and uh, I joined from Hong Kong basically through online basically. And uh, so Tsuda and as well as like, you know, the cyborg, they they were prepared, they are well prepared for the studio visit and that that like in short their honesty and uh, you know they are really sincere that like and they want to communicate, they want to convey what they want to do, what they are doing, you know, even through the online. And that that posh passion is something like you know that moved us and also uh, cyborg. So various issues that we face at the moment, you know, like a global warming, care, and uh, how are we care to have like you know, non-human entities, and uh, so like you know, the social structure that has been created, like you know, by the hegemony, like you know the those things how as a one single individual as an artist 
as a person who is capable of expressing something wonderfully or beautifully, you know, she's uh, tackling those issues. You know, her attitude is uh, it's 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 quite like you know, it's just synchronous. Like, and there's a consistency to her attitude as well as to her works. And what I'm what I was quite interested in was the. Uh, out of this uh, studio visit is that uh, you know the latex costume you know if you wear that costume it like you know it's uh, it gives it less visibility and then like you know, just restrict restrict your body and it ended up like you, know, you have to care the performers and then that somehow like i was quite surprised that the uh, artist is thinking like you know you're giving care to the performers you know how put the latex performer onto the stage not as a tool but uh, as a as a vulnerable person, you know, with the vulnerable mind, as a vulnerable human being, how do we care? You know, that, that to that extent, like, she's thinking, you know, when she makes a performance, and that was new finding for me. And, uh, you know, under this COVID-19 situation, you know, uh, we need to care each other. Or, like, you know, amongst the social distance like you know because we can't see other other human beings like you know there are lots of people started buying animals like you know dogs and cats and so on and so forth and then like you know, to be cared but uh so like you know the uh, what about the uh the distance or emotions between human and non-human entity and how that emotion being like you know connected to their consumption or exploitation so it's like you know, absolutely complex complex intricate you know the structure is there so she's thinking to that extent and uh, in her performance you know there's a uh, livestock are there so she often go to the like you know the slaughterhouse to the research and so those who are involved in the the uh, slaughterhouse like and she interviews like you know those who are involved with this little house actually so even to that extent she's thinking to that extent to make her work so when we see wonderful works and how we have been moved is the uh, you know the work gives us a new horizon and the work by cyborg is the uh, like not only the original works but uh, you know through the studio works uh, the, the, the cyborg's works like you know, not, not only the previous works but uh, through the studio visit like and you know, i I got the uh, strong sense that the she can sort of even push that horizon further. And then today's uh, comment she gave, I was, uh, I, 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 like, uh, yeah, I do, I, I'm proud of myself as a part of committee member that uh, we selected Tsuda and uh, Cyborg as a winners. Thank you. So, uh, Miss Normano, please. And as, like, the uh, other, uh, the committee members, I uh, for us, each artist, you know, like you know, we visited studios, you know, like and you know, for each artist, and uh, for some artists, like because of COVID nineteen situation, we couldn't really visit. But uh, like you know, we gather one place, and we, you know, face to face or through the online, like you know, we spend good time with the artist, and then uh, extended to the discussion, and uh, we had a really good time. So that was uh, that was uh, I had a really good time, and as the condo mentioned, so this process. There's some, like, you know, this magical moment. It's, it's almost like an explosion, like, you know, where we get the sense, basically. It's maybe even for the artists, but also for their committee members, like, you know, to have, like, you know, that, uh, to, to gr yeah, like, we managed to grasp the core of their practice or something, you know, or discovery. So, like, you know, we had that, like, you know, a couple of times, and uh, we committee members, you know, we were we felt like we've been feeling that like you know it's been absolutely grateful to be in the moment and uh you know for the even for the artists like you know they can just they can sort of yeah like you know utilize that moment like you know for the extra input for their and then like you know seeing the uh, latex you know the costume performer or installation mm, so the character as such you know so she was there that person was there during the presentation, I uh, so talking about the uh, presentation by Cyborg, like you know the two discoveries and the two issues I, I think like you know, which has been given or like by her basically to me. So uh, 
so as the Takashi mentioned, so latex suit performers. So like you know her. So like you know the until this day being cared like you know that the performance is not possible. So like uh, it's uh, awkwardness, you know. So it's not only performance but also. Uh, so even the audience like you know, allows like she allows the audience to care the performance basically, and. Uh, so the ones being cared and the the one who is giving care. So that relationship will be built, and uh, so our fixed notion. So the in the the vulnerable being supported by someone who is stronger, but the one who is giving the care, like, like you know, the one who is giving a care also get cared. So that's something she mentioned actually, and uh, yeah, that was uh, yeah that was quite interesting too. So. Uh, so often, like you know, so what that what, so that that, that what happened there was like you know just giving, uh, giving me like another light onto this assumption that we live on, you know, like uh, someone who are stronger gives you support. It's the same for the gender discrimination or gender difference, you know. So always like you know categorization, the separation, you know those things. Amongst those differences, or we see hierarchy, and that hierarchy. Is basically like you know we believe the hierarchy somehow as assumption, but as the uh, cyborg mentioned, even the ones, even the ones uh, receives the care that they can give the care back to the ones who are giving the care, and she extended that uh, you know the uh, the vulnerability or like you know, being strong is not like you know by the individual, but like you know, it's it's being. Like created by the environment, basically. And another thing is that uh, it's 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 yeah. So same for the two as well. Uh, they think about performance, basically. And uh, so in case of cyborg, so that latex performers, you know, like you know, being on stage and so on and so forth, and that will be created in the uh, the museum platform or like a. Uh, art festivals and uh, as an artist she makes uh, the exhibition as well so what she said that's something I sort of like think as an issue that uh, so in case of you know the performance format like she can pull audience onto the actual work into it so, uh, like, you know, if she give a shout to the audience, they can be a part of it, right? They physically become a part of the performance. But in case of installation, uh, there is a difficulty of bringing the, uh, the viewers into the work. So, that's a challenge, like, you know, she shared, basically. And this is not restricted to uh, or limited to a cyborg's work. But like you know, the same applies. This issue applies to the or challenges are there to the uh, all the other people's work as well. So when we create exhibition, for example, or you know, like you know, we go to a white cube or museum, and then when we face the work, we somehow take a certain difference, and we become passive. And whereas in performance, like you know, you get pulled in. Though you taking certain dis distance and you're becoming a, you know, the passive audience, but still you get pulled in. So there's an active element to it, and with the active element, like and that allows us to think about what is really going on. But uh, you know, like a static installation painting, you know, the same. We somehow have to actively sort of engage into the works. Like, can we really do this? You know. And have we ever been doing this? Like, you know, that's a primal question. You know, that's something I've been thinking from the point raised by the cyborg. So, uh, so whatever I go to a museum or exhibition, so on, like, and there's something I need to sort of keep reminding myself. And uh, so after the two years from this, you know, out of this award, cyborg, like, you know, she will have the exhibition, you know, under the museum condition. So I'm... Um, 
I'm, I'm quite interested in like, you know, what sort of output she will come up with. And uh, as, I have, as I said, you know, with the static visual objects, how can we transform that scene or that platform uh, to be like as strong as the uh, performance, you know, the platform? You know, somehow that, something like that pulls the uh, audience into the work. So that's somehow like that's something I'm hoping to see, basically. Thank you. So as uh, Ms. Nomada mentioned, uh, I think Kavar also mentioned a uh, similar, made a similar comment. Um, I want to ask of other things, but uh, since we kind of uh, pushing time, actually, um, as representative of the committee, uh, Nomura made a comment. So in terms of uh, the artists, the the extent to which they have an internal desire and motivation to, to make their expression, we had uh, comments from everyone. Um, so I, I think we don't need to talk any more about that, but in terms of um, how they develop overseas, this is another point that we can talk about. So in terms of this internal desire and motivation to express themselves, this also connects strongly with, uh, you know, translating into another uh, language. And this will really support the artists in, in expanding their activities overseas. This was something that was talked about. In terms of kind of uh, accelerating the activities of the artists overseas, how we kind of increase their international scope. This is something that we need to consider. This is kind of a perspective of the committee as well. So uh, I would just like to ask uh, Ms. Takahashi and uh, Washita, um, Washita, as uh, your experience of working for the uh, Japanese pavilion at the Venice Biennale, uh, so from your experiences as being the commissioner, um, in terms of this respect, how we expand artists' activities. And then in terms of uh, Ms. Takahashi, you're working in Hong Kong at the uh, CHAT Art Museum as director. So in terms of your own experiences, if you could talk about this international uh, approach development. Can I start? Yeah. So... Uh when we talk about Japanese art, you know, after the Meiji restoration, you know, we got the massive influence from the West and, uh, and having that influence, you know, we, and then like a sort of like a counter reaction to the influence basically, and uh, like to Japanese or to be Japanese in a way, you know, so uh, and those two currents, you know, just go, one gets stronger, other got weed and so on and so forth, like, and that's how being developed basically. And when the situation, you know, so, uh, so being somehow different from the what's going on outside of Japan, like and what's the uniqueness to Japan, you know, like a flatness, you know, like a flatness on the painting and so on, you know, and how to promote that, like, you know, those ideas are there. And, uh, but for example, uh, so Cyborg, how she ended up making that sort of work, you know, like when I started asking, like, you know, she was saying, like, you know, she was studying painting and then that painting, you know, studying at the university didn't, there's a gap between, like, you know, what she got taught and what she wanted to make and uh, out of university, It's somehow like out of university underground event, you know, she found that medium as her, like, you know, as a main medium, basically. And uh, that somehow fit fitted into what she wanted to do. And uh, so as, you know, the uh, Nomura-san, Takasuki-san mentioned, you know, this internal desire, it's, that's what it is, isn't it, basically, I think. So, uh, to 
expressing themselves, expressing themselves or themselves to the outside of Japan, you know, but like an outside, like, let's say, you know, the New York, Paris, you know, those are the places which once upon a time assumed, you know, to be, but today it can be Indonesia. So like, what do you mean by outside of Japan? You know, that's something we need to think, basically. Uh, and that's, of course, like we have discussed, you know, and... Uh, So like you know, there's more diversity in a way, like you know, sort of uh, appearing in terms of like you know the target uh, country basically. So like you know through the selection, like you know we could sort of see different different options, different different ideas like you know, coming out of, from the artists. Thank you. So then, uh, Mr. Takashi. Uh, well, it's quite materialistic, but to answer, but like you know, it's it's context, isn't it? And uh, so in Japan, like, you know, modern contemporary art, it's not limited to Japan. So a Fluxus, you know, it's already inter based on the international network, you know, amongst the members, like, that's Japanese artist. Or Monoha has been, like, recognized on the international level. Murakami Takashi. Nara, those big artists, like, you know, they are recognized outside of Japan on a global scale. And uh, they, uh, they are quite aware, out, like, you know, within this, they are quite aware of the essence or core of what they are doing, like, out of this, uh, you know, the uh, Western art history, basically. And then, because their work being contextualized, that's that is how like you know people outside of japan can understand what they're trying to do so uh, so the con contextualization is quite key i think and also the artist himself herself needs to be aware that uh, you know that person is like you know as a part of a global citizen not just being a japanese but you know, like, of course, like, you know, this, being in Japan, there's a local issues there, but uh, as a whole, as a planet, you know, there's a common issues there. And that's something like we can talk with other people. And uh, like the question is, if the artist can have that sense of awareness, basically. So if the artist can approach to this uh, global issues and how they're trying to in improve basically out of a situation you know so that that sort of mentality is quite important i think and what will be shared you know amongst there and like you know this this uh, selection committee so like a three days we we had really in-depth a uh, discussion like you know the inequality around the world gender issues or like a colonialization those things like in slipped in here and there and uh, and us being a creator together with artists how how are we going to sort of like you know fight against you know with our knowledge and technologies abilities how are we going to go against those issues you know So the uh, you know the Tsuda and Cyborg like you know those are the reason why we they are selected basically. So uh, Tsuda Cyborg. So. So they had the they they had the capacity to be able to sort of discuss together with us basically. Thank you. So this global citizen, is a very interesting, point. And in terms of having a a kind of a common language. This is obviously a very important uh, point, I think. So, so at the time, we, we are quite limited. So I'd like to move on to um, ask uh, Tsuda Michiko and Cyborg to to talk a little. So if we could invite uh, Tsuda Michiko and uh, from the committee members as well, we welcome, of course, any questions um, during their uh, talks. So from um, Tsuda Michiko, I'll just quickly introduce. Uh, so I would just uh, uh, introduce, um, basically uh, based in uh, Kanagawa Prefecture. 
and uh, worked at the graduated from Tokyo University Arts and afterwards has uh, shown at uh, Toyota Art Center, Mori Art Museum, Aichi Triennale, and also in 2021 showed in the 10th Asia Pacific Triennale in Australia. So she works in a variety of forms, uh, installations, performances based on characteristics of video media. Um, so Ms. Suda will be showing um, some videos that she also showed in the studio visits. But if you could uh, please um, refrain from recording these. So then, um, Suda, if you could introduce your work and then your ideas for the exhibition at present. So, as has been introduced, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name's uh, Tsuda Michiko, and uh, so, once again, I'm absolutely uh, delighted. Uh, anyway, like, let me like you know, introduce my uh, past works a little bit. So this is the uh, archived, you know, the uh, uh, video from the uh, my installation works. So it's a 2016 work, and uh, so intercommunication center at Hatsudai. That's where I did the exhibition. So, so installation is static. And then the audience becomes absolutely passive, you know, that's something like in which has been discussed. I, in this work, I felt the same. So that's something like I did an investigation on this work. So, uh, so uh, one of my, uh, like the partner dancer, she was there on this image, but, uh, so in the archive, like, you know, the uh, people is there, like, you know, that's quite important element because, uh, because the, the the body of viewer is there and that makes somehow additional sense to the work. So the structure is quite simple. So the empty frames here and there, in this case, like in 12 empty frames, same size, uh, installed or set in, some are empty and then some are like, you know, the mirrors are being set and then some are projected with images. And, uh, and then the camera in the space will like you know they project the images recorded or like in real time or some of the pre-recorded images so it's a simple structure but like what you see now is what is what you see and what is now what is the directions you know all those like you know sense of direction and so on will you get blurred out so it's not like you know asking audience to be part of it but uh this one like you know allows the audience coming from like in you know, many directions so uh it's not so it's suddenly audience be sucked into the work, you know, that's what I was trying to do. And I did this uh, work in different, different uh, venues. So I try adapt myself, adapt the work to the venues, basically. So the space comes fast, basically. So it's not like something... Of course, like, you know, there's something I want to show to the viewers, but it's not like, you know, the, it's, it's not that the viewers will see what I want to see or what I want to show. But, uh, but having the work in a space, the, uh, the space itself will get transformed. You know, that's, that's something a little bit more important. And the next one. So the uh, important work. So this is the uh, screen, it's called Screen Baby 2. So like in you know, May 2020, and uh, it's a performative work or performance work. So Kamura Megumi is a choreographer, dan dancer, like you know, so it's collaborated together with her. And uh, it's a archive video along with the uh, Original footage from the uh, you know the Tokyo story by the uh, Ozu Yasujiro. So uh, to basically this uh, reenactment of the of the uh, opening the, uh, cleaning up scene from the Tokyo story. This is like about like a five minutes you know like the very beginning of the film. 
so in the house in Tokyo, you know, before the parents comes in, like, you know, the, so the wife, Miyake Kuniko needs to clean up, basically. So the cleaning up, right? It's just spending more than one minute on this scene. It's like, you know, the each each maneuver is is detailed, you know, like uh, meticulously in a choreographer, and then that's what we have analyzed, basically. So as the uh, watch that on mentioned, you know, the uh, male body moving straight and the female body going left to right. I mean, like, you know, that, that scene, I just omitted it, but... Uh, but the female body is basically the female body is running the house basically, and uh, but to represent that, like you know, the Ozu is spending so many cuts, you know, to show that like you know the house being run by female body. And uh, if I put myself in it and think about it, it's a it's a beautiful composition created, you know, on in terms of image, and yet. The, uh, the female body is running the house, you know, like that's how we sort of analyzed the scene. So the, the view, viewpoint of camera, you know, that, that was like really important in this work. So under this award selection, I was, I wasn't really, uh, uh, yeah, I spent quite a lot of, like, you know, sort of a time, you know, like, in order to show this, uh, you know, the clip or not, you know, like, I didn't show it under the presentation, but, like, you know, I just, like, you know, basically shared uh, during the discussion, and so, like, you know, that, that image or, like, in the video I would like to share just now. It's, like, you know, as a whole, it's a six minute, but... Uh... So this is uh, like 1988, so like when I was eight, this video being shot, like it's the first time my father uh, brought this uh, video camera to our family, so on the very same day basically. So uh, like you know, what's there, it's like my mother, my father, and the small me. So uh, my father, you know, the waving hands to the camera. It's uh, quite old, so it's a bit dark, so maybe if you can just turn off the uh, light in front. This is just like in a home video. But like in three of us there, you know, because I was the only kid there, like in everybody just looking at the camera or like you know, be aware of the presence of the camera. And I was feeling like, you know, the camera as, as if like instead of my brother or sister, you know, like saying hello to the camera or something, you know. And uh, like, you know, like we are talking about like, you know, how to sort of shoot the, uh, my birthday. So like, uh, I just going to skip a little bit, like, you know, the updating to my parents, like, you know, like what happened in school and so on and so forth. But, uh, so at one point, like, it gets a bit dark. So like, you know, put the light on it and then like, you know, my mom started like, you know, playing with a camera. So, uh, at the beginning, like, you know, my father put, placed the camera. Uh, so when my mother, like, you know, started, like, you know, looking into the camera, like, what has been captured, like, you know, she started saying it's too dark, so that's why she put a light. And then my mother was not really in a good mood. And that's partly because, like, you know, I was too close to my father. You know, like, uh, giving, like, you know, we getting on really well or something. And my mother was just kept saying, like, you know, grape tastes good or something, you know. And then when she checked the video, and then, like, you know, she just discovered that my father was in, a, in the center of the image. So this, uh, this, like, in a very fast, you know, the uh, portrait of my family in a way. And the center of the camera is the center of family in a way. That's how my parents fought over. It's about like an ask about my mother, like she didn't want to shoot, uh, yeah, she didn't want to shoot my father as a center, so that's why, like, you know, he get framed out. And then now, like, she's saying, like, you know, I'm the center of the family. 
But like at the same time, like she doesn't really look that happy. And I feel really terrible because of like some of the comments I was making on the video. But anyway, so this, so I was, I was always aware of that video, you know, like saying hello to the camera and then like, you know, my parents fighting over the center of the camera and so on. You know, like making certain operation to the camera, like in somehow related to the relationship amongst the family members and so on. So that, that stuck in my memory. And then I always wanted to, I tried a couple of times, like, you know, capturing those essence into my work and uh, so far I somehow failed and uh, but like you know, that image captures the uh, essence or core of my practice so all my other works somehow came from that you know the the, the clips of the video maybe on a subconscious level So, like, you know, during the presentation, like, you know, that's somehow, like, you know, that's, that's what I kind of realized, and then that's why I just wanted to share. And, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's about my uh, past works, and uh, for the research, you know, with this uh, award, so going outside of Japan, you know, I, uh, Asian Culture Council, I, with that foundation, you know, uh, I got the uh, support and I went to New York. I went to sort of like you know, to New York to do research and that was only for the six month. And the, like up until just before the, uh, like, you know, the spread of COVID-19. So six months is not really enough to do proper research. So I want to continue with this uh, award money, basically. That's Like, you know, with that research, like, you know, I can just maybe, like, you know, connect this, uh, you know, the performative work and uh, installation work. So, as for the work, it will be installation, like, you know, Japanese house or, like, a notion of house. So, like, in looking into the characteristics of house and also gender roles. So, like, so the viewpoint and also the body there in that space that sort of installation like installation i'm thinking of making so it's not like in sort of a from the outsider perspective but like in the audience sort of like you know immerse themselves into the space then they can sort of like realize those uh, gender structure or gender roles and so on thank you so uh next i'd like to ask uh, cyborg to join for a comment. Uh, first of all, I'll just quickly introduce you, Cyborg. So, Cyborg is currently uh, joining the Submerge Festival in Manchester, in England. Um, she's born in Toyama and uh, graduated from Joshua University of Art and Design and has held exhibitions at the Museum of Art Kochi, the Taro uh, Okamoto Memory Museum, uh, Aichi Trinale 2019, and also a solo exhibition in, in Slovenia in 2020. Uh, she creates latex bodysuits and then develops performances and installations in Japan and internationally. So, Cyborg, can you see us? Hello. <laughs> Okay, you can see us. So then, uh, if we could ask you a comment. Hello, everyone. So my name is uh, Cyborg. Uh, I'm grateful to have this opportunity to present my work to you today. In this presentation, I will um, show a video as I talk, uh, which is a fusion of all of my works so far, which is a performance work, Cycle of L. Uh, presented in 2020 at the Museum of Art Kochi. Um, it's also um, available online, so if you're interested, you can watch there as well. So, first I'll just introduce myself. 
Um, the name Cyborg is um, a portmanteau of my real name, Cyco, and Cyborg combined. Kind of a, a funny nickname, but this is actually a perfect name, I think, for me at now. It sounds strong at first, but it actually means um, a distorted body superimposed with the self, um, originally possessed, um, that has been stripped away, uh, lost aspects, becoming supplemented with something else. So these latex suits are something that I make, and these I wear myself, and then uh, make these performances, develop these performances. But I, I see these suits as an extension of my skin, a kind of second skin, and it's kind of excessively deformed, extended body. So using latex materials, there are different reasons that I do this, but um, it's like has a strong adhesion to the body um, and also synchronizes well with various suits. But also it overcomes various constructs such as sex and age. So first, um, this representative work of mine, a livestock series. It's like uh, toys, um, domestic animals, female domestic animals um, fulfilling their roles. Uh, so like uh, this li latex landscape where um, these characters which are assigned different roles and they are performing in these roles. Uh, the cow is milked, the sheep is shorn. The hen lays eggs, the pig is slaughtered, and the farmer woman strips. The uh, mother pig uh, nurses the piglets and uh, shows that the animals are under control in an artificial environment. And then at the very end, um, there is this kind of carnivalistic space where the audience can also perform and uh, join. In 2019, uh, I updated this series, livestock series, to create House of L, uh, Aichi Trinali in 2019, in the uh, performance series. So, in the first place, the idea of uh, domestic animals is a way of controlling reproduction. Um, and in terms of home, home is like this uh, sanctuary place for humans, but it has this dual um, place this also includes a sense of violence. So this kind of uh, boundary between uh, humans and animals, livestock and pets, and emotion as issues included within uh, biopolitics, these kind of issues. So here the livestock characters are like a companion uh, to humans, and the audience are in uh, in joining these performances, a uh, caring for the characters. So these kind of incomplete uh, characters and uh, these kind of ugly pets, um, in a sense, failures as pets, and kind of sharing this uh, sad uh, feeling of these these characters involving the audience. Um, and these are uh, dung beetles. These dung beetles in the work Pootopia, uh, they are... It's like a very small uh, narrative. And these uh, dung beetles are obviously uh, um, collecting this poop. And they are building this uh, poo castle and then dismantling it, disassembling it in a way, uh, digesting it. So uh, this House of L was this um, combination of Pootopia and Cycle of L. The idea that the audience cares for the livestock and that they are being cared for as well. And kind of showing this cycle of life through livestock and dung beetles and uh, it also involved uh, yosakoi, which is this uh, 
um, soul music of Japan's Kochi Prefecture to show this ceremony, a pray for rebirth. And uh, for me, during COVID-19 pandemic, when this was held, this was, uh, for me, one of the most important uh, at the time. So then I would just talk a little bit about my current ideas for shows for the next uh, uh, development of my work. So I want to show a cyborg and these domestic animals, alter egos, and also uh, this kind of designing of, of human life and to kind of build this world and hold uh, performances in it. This is just a, a vision, so it's not decided, but I'm thinking of this uh, setting, a uh, home as a setting. It uh, looks like a house where humans would live. Um, I call it cyborg land. It's also a livestock, uh, a land for livestock, a kind of uh, intermediary between uh, human and, and uh, space for animals. It's my uh, idea of this artificial space, um, kind of combining this, uh, it, what looks uh, quite um, accessible and colourful, but hides these issues of violence. So creating this home where it has this duality. These uh, problems of domestic violence, uh, emotional labour, exploitation, uh, issues related to feminism and uh, Marxist politics. So within this kind of uh, generation, I want to present these issues and actually um, broaden the, the issues, question even bigger things. So it's not simply a question of uh, power, but also questioning vulnerability. What is uh, vulnerability and power in the first place? So these, these characters, livestock characters, they're kind of vulnerable, incomplete, disposable in a way, the kind of stereotypes. But from these characters, I've been inspired by these characters which are weak but they actually uh, move our hearts in a way they move the audience's hearts and I'm hoping that the, there's a relationship that builds between the audience and these characters so my current plan the idea of uh, used using and being used not a kind of dystopia but This kind of uh, characters that go beyond um, the idea of uh, competition, these characters that could never survive uh, evolutionary processes. But the, in a sense, they, they kind of uh, just uh, symbolize love uh, in its purest form as pets that have no other power in a way. So this world of pets also connected to domestic violence and the idea of care. It, within human society, they are related to the structure of care. But at the same time, it's also connected to uh, self-maintenance and emotional labour, this uh, emotional capitalism in a way. So I'm also thinking in terms of these issues. this world of domestic animals they kind of living on the fuel of emotion is a world of, in which love is the object of competition so so in the next uh, exhibition I'm not sure how far I can achieve it but the performers who are wearing these costumes are kind of disabled by these uh, these 
suits and hoping that the audience will care for the the characters and in so doing it have the sense that they are being cared for themselves through doing this this is kind of the objective so these livestock characters they are uh, they're not just this simple cuteness but they're also partners to to people So also it shows that the way that humans have designed their lives around the use of uh, pets and livestock. I'm actually, you know, uh, in the UK, so I'd just like to say a comment about uh, my work here. Uh, actually, yesterday, uh, there was an opening performance yesterday Uh, kind of like a, uh, I'm in a parallel world in a way. But I'm also very grateful to be able to be in this world. Uh, still, I haven't started receiving uh, support from this award, but but the Nomura uh, Foundation is actually supporting me um, to achieve this event, not just giving monetary support, but uh, TCAA. Also, next week, I will also be holding a, an artist talk um, through the influence of the TCAA. And they will also coordinate the next steps. So I'm I'm very grateful to the TCAA to you know help me with these develop works. And uh, finally, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Cyborg and uh, Tsuda. Um, we are running out of time, but since we have uh, both Tsuda and Cyborg here, and uh, also the committee members, so in terms of the winners and for the committee members. Um, so you heard their wonderful presentations and you had, um, if you have any uh, stronger thoughts uh, from their presentations. I think uh, Cyborg, particularly your presentation was very strong. Tuda's presentation was very strong uh, during the studio visits. If, uh, yeah, there are any comments about their presentation specifically. Uh, it's, I think like, you know, the, whatever the question I prepared is just already being answered. So like, you know, I'm trying to come up with something different. So, uh, so when I just like, you know, witnessed the, uh, like presentation by a cyborg, like I knew the work anyway, but, uh, you know, with the words from the artist itself, like, you know, it's really, uh, strong and, uh, So it's quite uh, opposite from. It's 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 the approach is quite different, and yet the uh, that what we are trying to do is quite similar. So that's like you know something I'd like to sort of hear some words from the uh, selection committees. And the two exhibitions, you know, at the end. So. Uh, So, like, you know, the, the us two artists, like, you know, we're interested in similar things. So, uh, maybe at one point, maybe we can just meet up or, I don't know, something like, you know, to share our thoughts or something. Can I say something? Uh, also, um, hearing uh, Tsuda's speech, I also thought something very similar. Um, so, the committee members... Um, I have uh, some questions to the committee members that I prepared, but they've already been answered in a way. And uh, during the uh, selection process, I thought that I had failed, actually. 
I I hadn't answered the questions and uh, kind of um, unhappy with my performance, but wasn't sure about how much I had uh, shared my my ideas. But uh, everyone really deepened uh, their understanding. And so all of my questions have already been answered in a way. Um, also in terms, I, I, I hope to meet Tsuda at some point. Um, my, I live in Toyama. Um, so there have been limitations in terms of movement because of the uh, infection. But um, since Ishikawa is quite close, uh, let's meet. Uh, let's meet in Hokuriku. I'll, I'll I'll be in touch. Actually, um, Takuchi and uh, Shiga, they actually met up and cooperated and uh, will be working together with the exhibition. So I hope in a similar way that both of you will be meeting and collaborating um, and discussing your exhibition. So from the committee members, at home, has been uh, a key word. About the, uh, the about home, but like in talking about the uh, Tsuda's performance, like in you know, collaborating together with Kamimura, I, uh, like, you know, that's something you have shared like in today. Uh, the choreography and dance, when we think about to that extent, the dance is like using your own body it's like, you know, to think about like you know, the the physicality and the life, you know, the explosion of your life, you know, that 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 is in one sense it's quite important element of dance. But uh, at the same time, the when we choreograph, the basically like choreography is like in restricting humans' bodies, isn't it? So. Uh, so expecting like you know dancer to sort of like move as if it is a machine or something you know so in case of Tsuda, it it is juxtaposed you know to the uh, original film but uh so what has like you know the gaze of camera you know onto the author's work basically but the, if it's reenacted then like you know, it becomes uh it's not natural like you know, maybe that's what she's trying to do but if you see your work in to this extent then the uh you know the spontaneous natural movement like you know dance is something like you know giving a restriction over the body and that's how i read it and uh and then we've been talking about care you know like you know the uh yeah during the uh, cyborg's presentation you know the under the latex body uh, so, as if cyborg, like, you know, the, the expansion of your body at the same time, like, you, know, you lose certain freedom, basically. I mean, on a physical level, like, if you wear, like, you sweat so much so that you can't really wear the costume for a long time, you know. So, the, 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 the element of restriction is quite strong, I think, you know. And, uh, so... So, like, as a background, like, you know, this uh, latex, you know, the fetishism, sort of, like, in you know, that sort of event, you know, the restriction is quite also quite important element to it. And uh, so, so that's work and the cyborg's work, you know, it's a certain similarity to it, you know, that's, that's what I see in common, basically. And the back to Tsuda. So, restricted to video. And the body, like in you know, the uh, reframed or restricted by the video, you know, or the camera, maybe. And maybe we get cared through that. Like, and that's something I've been wondering, basically. That's something I want to ask to Suda. That's a really good question. Uh, the question, you know, uh, that like, I need to think about it somehow. You know, being cared by the gaze of camera, 
but the, the camera, the presence of camera, it's like the things emerges from there. So even like in a Zoom meeting or like, you know, that's a bit every experience somehow nowadays, you know. And uh, presence of camera is, is just like on a daily level. I'm not sure whether that to do with care or not, but uh, camera is somehow close to us, you know. And uh, maybe that leads to care. And uh, I think like that's quite a good theme to sort of digging into it. But as in terms of my experience, you know, you know, when I do... Uh, when I uh, shoot the interview, like at one point on my practice, you know, I was I've been doing this, you know, and uh, so those who are like in sort of a familiar with like you know doing interview, like you know they can sort of answer smoothly, but uh, but those who are not familiar with like you know having the presence of camera, then because of the presence of the camera what emerges what comes out from them you know it's different you know um it does have the impact on the people and that's something i'm aware of. so as nomura mentioned you know it's, it's it's similar to the exploitation i think so uh i'm quite careful with this so care and exploitation is like uh, it's 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 more or less the same thing, isn't it? It's like a, it's a side of coin sort of relationship, basically. Thank you. Actually, we uh, are kind of over time, running over time. We just have a, um, a, we'll extend a little bit more. If there are any questions from the audience, I'd invite you to ask. No. So then, um. uh, so just like a small question to Cyborg. Uh, so, uh, so your performance is absolutely spectacular, and uh, so, for example, your sakoi is you know the dance, traditional Japanese dance. You know, uh, it's often being used like in some local, like you know, the public sections. You know, so like you know, to to the politicality of this spectacular you know, being spectacular. So like, you, know, you are as an, like, the sort of a sort of producer to create this something spectacle. It's a spectacle. It's something like, you know, being created by the authority. So what do you think about it? What is your opinion on this? Uh, thank you always for the difficult questions that you pose, uh, Takashi. Um, the the word spectacle I, I it's been used in my work before but I, i've never really thought about my work in that way basically uh, these latex suits they are things that i've made myself sometimes if someone doesn't know me it, they think that maybe i've been ordered to, to make them, uh, commissioned to make them to, for money, but uh, this is not the case. I, I'm making them um, kind of in a daily uh, activity. And so rather than thinking of them as having this big power, they're, they're really something that I make in my domestic uh, envir environment. But if something close to what you're talking about, I, I want to think about uh, making a cyborg land and this land, uh, wondering about how I can make it, um, I, the idea of theme park comes to mind. Uh, something like Disneyland, if I go to these kind of places, they really um, very comprehensively made uh, and so Mickey, for example, the kind of this power of imagination, like uh, appealing to the audience, uh, it's kind of a, a, a good word, but 
but I I just feel like I can't achieve uh, that kind of level, and it kind of makes me um, kind of sad in a way. But uh, but what's amazing about these things is that it's not only that they are very large scale, but they're also very small things, very particular things that they are um, focusing on. There is large things like the the budget and the the scale. These are, of course, out of my hands, but but just in my scale, it's something that I can achieve with my own scale. These kind of small details and uh, I, I, putting a spotlight on these um, small things. I think that's maybe a better way to work. So Disney was amazing because the stuff a kind of lining up and then uh, um, high-fiving with the uh, you know people visiting, kind of a bit like Abramovich's performance. These kind of details, they're not, not uh, you know, it doesn't involve a budget, um, but just achieving these things. So I, I really learn a lot from uh, visiting. Um, and in terms of my own work, my own performances, uh, uh, not uh, a spectacle in terms of large budget, but this relationship between the performance and the audience, the, something that emerges, uh, this is what I'm hoping to achieve. I, I'm not sure if uh, I answered your question, but... Uh, Uh, yeah, let's talk later somewhere else. It's it's not that's it's not only about money basically, like and you know, how much being spent. But like you know, once you come back from England, like let's let's talk. Let's talk. Can I just make some more comments? But um, it's uh, no like time is limited. But like maybe it's my it's my hope. So like you know, these two artists like you know they do have like you know they do have shared. Or like somehow common issues they have, and um, but like you know the output are so different, you know. So uh, it's a really good combination. At the same time, like it's a difficult combination, basically. So like when when we think about the uh, like you know the actual the final space, you know, of the exhibition. But anyway, another some another point like in which is come something in common is that the watch dimension, like you know this, you know the. Uh, the body, like, you know, the the captured in the camera, like, you know, the, if they can be cured by the camera or not, or like, you know, this uh, something uh, the Cyborg mentioned at the, the uh, studio visit. So here, hierarchy, it's hierarchy is based on our assumptions and then um, it's, you know, with a uh, power of imagination, like, and we can just flip over this power of hierarchy, you know, that's something I was quite surprised to hear. So, like, you know, all the living forms, like, you know, to be equal, you know, on this planet. And uh, so, exchange, uh, you know, their non living things and emotion. So, like, an uh, eyeball or, like, you know, their cleaning robot sort of thing. So, they are not even animals, like, you know, those entities, like, and how, you know, we often, like, you know, sort of put our emotion onto them, you know. So the uh the, the boundary is expanding so much and uh and how are we going to sort of build a relationship, you know, or like you know, not only relationship or hierarchy, you know, how do we reimagine those structures? So that's something like maybe in, in common between these two artists. And my hope or request is that uh, like you know, because there are so many common things or themes or issues there. And I'm uh, hoping that there will be a wonderful exchange amongst the art artists. But don't, please do not restrict, restrict yourself to these things or issues that you share. You know, you don't need to sort of like and have, keep your same, like, you know, the steps together, you know. And uh, also, please do challenge us, you know, us viewers. Because the viewers... So, like, you know, for example, like in Disneyland, like, you know, those entertainment sort of sort of gestures, you know, that allows the, uh, you know, the audience to feel be immersed, you know, so that they can 
you know, lacking devices to enjoy, you know. You know, because we are so familiar with that, right? But uh, but what we need to sort of nurture is 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 to have that strength within ourselves to be able to sort of find ourselves the points that we can enjoy by ourselves. So, like, and please do make something challenging. Like, let's not make things so easy so that we can comprehend everything. That's like on my personal level. Like, you know, that's something we hoping. Like, and please train us that gaze. You know. Thank you. Uh, really uh, wonderful advice, or rather, um, words, comment. Um, so I'm currently living in Ishikawa Prefecture, and I've been uh, teaching at the university um, just for for one year um, till now, and and being away from Tokyo and being involved in art education in in uh, Japan, really think that uh, it's a real problem, like how to connect art with global. Um, globally in Japan, and uh, it was mentioned. I, I mentioned in the uh, opening ceremony about uh, this um, language problem, and it's kind of um, it, how to develop in Japan. It's kind of developing without actually um, really being uh, without a proper foundation being based but uh, in terms of the power of the work i i think a global citizen the idea of creating a global citizen uh, through the work developing this is important thank you very much uh, thank you for the comments from the committee and uh, i'd just like to finish uh, we are over time uh, but I'd just like to finish. Um, thank you, um, Ms. Sudha Cyborg and the members of the Section Committee for the valuable comments today. And also uh, to the uh, in interpreters who have been working hard behind the scenes. Um, so the second TCAA exhibition is currently on view on the third floor of the museum. Entry is free. Um, so for those who haven't seen it yet, please um, feel free to visit. Uh, TCAA will continue as a biennial Open Call Award. Uh, we look forward to receiving applications from interested artists. Um, the details will be announced on the website uh, after May of next year. So uh, it feels like a long um, symposium, but actually very short. Cyborg, thank you for joining from uh, a very early time in the UK. And uh, Tsuda Michiko, thank you very much. Pass to the uh, MC. So thank you, Shiomi, uh, Yuko, and uh, every all the panelists today. So we will finish the Tokyo Contemporary Art Award 2022-2024 um, symposium. Thank you to the audience to for listening, participating until the end. So if you can return the uh, receivers at the uh, door when you leave uh, and make sure that you don't take them home with you, we'd be very grateful. The handouts also include a questionnaire. So if you could fill it out at the, uh, the desk outside and uh, return them, we'd be very grateful. So, uh, Xiaomi Yuko also mentioned, but on the third floor in the exhibition gallery, we have the Tokyo Contemporary Art Award 2020-2022 Art Award uh, by Hikaru Fuji and Yamashiro Chikako, um, which is a free admission. Please, we welcome you to, to see the exhibition. So, thank you very much for listening until the end. Thank you for today. それでは登壇者の皆様ありがとうございました。ご講談ください。